back to Unsightly Opinions. If you're new, my name's Tamara, and today we're gonna talk about makeup. Makeup has always been a challenge for me. I don't wear makeup because I think I need to. I can't look in the mirror and see if I look better with or without makeup, so I can be just as confident without as with. I wear makeup because I feel it's a really fun way to self-express. I feel it's a great way to play with colors and see what works and what doesn't. And I have a canvas that I can wipe clean at the end of the day. I typically wear a little bit more makeup on camera because I know that my particular complexion, being an albino person having white hair, I don't have a lot of definition to my physical features without adding a little bit extra. Do I think I need that to look good? No. But today I'm gonna to walk you through some of my mirrorless makeup techniques that I've developed over the last 15 or so years that I've been experimenting with makeup and try and give you some ideas of how you can do your makeup if you're blind or low vision. Let's do a little bit of a get ready with me and I'll show you my entire filming makeup routine. I may not be able to tell you the exact shade or color of each of these products, but if I don't have it on film, it will be listed down in the comments. I should also mention that I am not sponsored by anyone to promote any of these products, so these are just what I found works best for me. And I know there's many different skin types and many different skin tones, so you'll probably have to experiment to find what's right for you. First off, I start off with a primer. This is the Smashbox Photo Finish Primer. The reason I use this one is because it doesn't have any pigment in it. And I know you're supposed to use brushes with your makeup, but I find it sometimes easier to use my fingers for certain types of makeup application to make sure I've got good coverage. I wash my hands beforehand and then I just rub it on my face and try and get a little bit everywhere. It can be really hard to find makeup that's in the right color and most primers have some kind of tone to it, either green or tan, and that will make my foundation look the wrong color for my skin tone because I am so pale. Next, I come in with the lightest shade of the Kat Von D Locket Foundation, and I do the exact same thing that I do with my primer. I put one pump on the back of my hand, and then I use my hands to go in and spread the foundation everywhere. I find that this foundation is very, very thick, so it needs a lot of blending. I find that it doesn't blend as well when you use anything other than hands or if you miss that primer, it doesn't go on very smooth. I have been looking for about 15 years for a foundation that matches my skin tone. I, I want something that's medium coverage. I don't want something that's super thick, but this is the closest to my skin tone I have been able to find. I have tried Fenty Beauty. I have tried Chantecaille. I have tried every drugstore brand. Uh, that has ever been released. And about every six months, I'll walk into a Sephora and see uh, what new products have come out and if there's anything in my shade. But I know that with this one, even if it looks pale right now, because of the oxidation, when it dries, it actually ends up a little bit more orange than my skin tone. And that's one of the things that I really want to avoid. I don't want to look like an Oompa Loompa and I want to have a foundation that's my shade, but I have yet to find one. And I'm spreading the foundation everywhere on my eyelids because you can see blood vessels and I look like I have very dark circles. So I spread the foundation everywhere on my eyelids and especially focus under my eyes. Try and cover up my dark circles. And since there is no concealer that's lighter than this foundation that I'm using, I usually just go a little thicker in some areas than others. And then at the end, when I think I've got decent coverage, I come under my chin and try and blend down my neck. And then I'll just go in and touch up any areas that I think have blemishes or I know have particular tendencies to be a little bit more red. Once I have my foundation layered with my hands, I come back in and I blend it with a flat bristle brush to make sure that I have gotten it blended everywhere. The key to blind makeup is to overblend. Overblending is incredibly important because if you can't tell if you've got your makeup on smoothly, you're gonna need to blend a little bit more just to make sure that that's the case. And I'm just using circular motions and kind of going everywhere. So next I'm going to come back in, and this is where my makeup routine is probably gonna deviate from most standard routines. I have a white eyeshadow, and what I do with this eyeshadow is I go around my hairline 
just to blend my foundation into my hairline. So I just come in with a little bit of this white and just blend it onto my ears and into my hairline. Just to make sure I don't have any streaks or definitive lines where my hair starts. I also use this white eyeshadow as my base to my highlighter. So I'll come down the bridge of my nose and I'll just do a little bit under my eyes. Contour is something that as a person with albinism, I have found very difficult to accomplish and know how much or how little to put on. And I find most contour shades look very orange or very brown on me. So what I have picked is a bit of a gray pink shade. This is another Annabelle and I can tell it from the white one because this one, the lid broke off. Otherwise I would have them braille labeled to tell them apart. I now come in with an angled brush and I start, I tap it and I start very gently up by my ear and kind of create a diagonal line between my ear and the corner of my lips. And then I blend that in just to give my cheeks some definition. And the key here is blending because I don't want to look like I've got brown streaks on my cheeks. I just wanna give myself a little bit of color and definition. And I'm doing the same thing now on the other side. And I am also just going to define the corner of my jaw and just take that color under my chin a little bit with this same gray pink shade. Next, I'm going to do my blush. I am going to come in with this Hourglass blush. It is a dusty rose, pearly, light pink shade. I typically don't go too bright with my blush because I find it can get really intense really quickly on a complexion my shade. And I come in and I just go just over top on the apples of my cheeks up to the corner, just over top of where I was doing my contouring. And then I just do a little poof on my nose, on my chin, and then blend it down my neck. Very occasionally, I will add just a tiny bit on my forehead, but I'm not even sure if that's gonna show up on camera. Next in my routine, I usually do my eyebrows. The only product I have found that works is white eyeliner. So I have a white eyeliner pencil and I go in to my eyebrows because I don't want them to look orange from my foundation and I want them to be a little bit defined. So I find the center of my eyebrow and I just gently work my way, feeling with the pencil where my eyebrows are and I just draw in just to define them. Then I do the same thing on the other side, focusing on mostly the center part of my eyebrow and working my way out, following the general shape. And because I don't want my eyebrows to look uneven, what I will do is I'll come in with a spoolie, usually used for mascara, and I will just comb through my eyebrows, just to kind of make sure that it's blended out and looking good. All right, so the next step is going to be eyes. I'll do my waterline with this same white eyeliner pencil, and I don't find any difficulty with this. I know a lot of people do, but I can get right onto my eye and touch it without any major issues. So I'm just coming in and I'm doing the entire underside of my eye, all the way from the outside corner into my tear duct. So now that I have that on, what I'll do next is my eyeshadow. Today I'm using the Naked 3 palette. Sometimes when I get a new palette or I'm exploring new colors, I will have a list brailed out of what each pan is, but I have been using this particular palette for about five years. Not the same palette, different palettes. I have hit pan multiple times, but I really like the shades because it's got a lot of neutral versatility and a lot of pinks and purples, and that's what I go for on my typical day to day. And I come in to this far left pan and I just run my brush through it a bunch, tap it off, and then I am going to cover the entire eyelid from center to outside edge. And this is just going to be kind of the base shade that I'm going to build upon. And usually I will go back and forth. And once I've got the shade on one eye, I will go over and do the shade on the other eye. I like to tap off before I put it on my eye so I don't get any fallout underneath, especially when I get into the darker shades. Once I feel I've got a nice even layer of that on, 
Then I'll move into my next shade. So I'm coming in with a second shade here, which is a very light pearly pink. And then I'm just going to go on just the lid, not all the way up to the eyebrow, but just the lid from center all the way out to the side. And then I'm gonna go and do the same thing on the other side. Now I'm gonna come to this next shade down, which is just a darker version of the one next to it. It's a sparkly shade. And I'm going to put that just on the outside from the center of my eyelid to the corner. And we're just gonna rub back and forth. And the key here is to blend, 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 blend. Even when you think you've got it on nicely, keep blending because if you can't tell how much you've put on, if there is a little bit more on one side than the other, you're gonna wanna blend that down so it looks more even. And then I'm coming in and doing the other side. Then I'm going to come down sixth shade here, which is a golden color. And I'm going to put that just on the outside third of my eye and kind of blend it into that medium pink that we were just putting on. And then I'm gonna come and do the same thing on the other side. Now I just work my way from lightest to darkest in my shades and kind of create a smoky look as I go across. So now that I've done that shade, I come two shades lower. So I'm about five from the bottom. Yeah, I'm fifth from the bottom. And then I do that just on the outside corner again, just to start building the shade darker the further out we go. And usually I'll use my one hand to mark which pan I'm in and then the other to apply. Then I'm getting into the very dark colors and I go to the second darkest, which is kind of a maroon shade. And I just very gently tap a little bit onto my brush and then just do just the outside corner of my eye and make sure I blend that really well. And I'll just wipe off my brush here onto my hand and I'm just gonna go in over the entire eyelid and blend it out. So that's it for my eyeshadow. Hopefully it looks nice and even. Then I come in with a very small angle brush. That's a big one. So I come in with this very darkest shade on the far right of my pan and I use that to kind of line just the corner underneath my eye. And if I'm feeling really, really adventurous, I might try and make a wing. Wings and eyeliner are something that I've just recently started trying and I find are really, really difficult. So if you have any tips or tricks for how to do eyeliner wings, please let me know. So I'm just gonna come in under my eye here and I try and usually feel for my eyelashes and then come in. Normally I have my elbows rested on a desk to kind of stabilize. So I'm finding this a little more challenging today. And then I come back in and I do the other side. And just do just the outside corner under my eye, just to give it some, to bring the shape down. I will also go just on the outside corner at the top of my lid and trace my eyelashes just out to the corner again giving it just a little bit more color. Next, I will typically do my eyeliner and I am using this Clinique eyeliner. So I'll just come in and I will very delicately line my entire eyelid from center to outside edge. I don't want a really thick line. And then usually I start at the center, work my way out, come back to the center and all the way in to the middle. Oh, I feel like that went a little thick today. I'm no eyeliner expert by any stretch of the imagination, but I am trying. A blind girl tip number two, get really close to the end of whatever you are using to apply. So I typically hold my brushes very close to the bristles and I typically hold my pencils very close to the tip because I know the closer I can get to my fingertips to where I'm actually putting it on, the more accurate I can be. 
Third, I have mascara. And mascara is probably the first thing that I started with when I started trying and experimenting with makeup. I typically just go in for a drugstore mascara. I have naturally long eyelashes, so I don't really need much to define them. And this is Maybelline's Colossal Lash in Not Waterproof, because this is typically where I will mess up my makeup look the most. So I will come in, and because I have white eyelashes, I try and come in above for one stroke first. So I have my eye closed and I'm doing the top of my lashes because I have to have a coat all the way around to make sure that my eyelashes look black. I'm not just defining them. And then I'll come all the way to the center and I'm trying to just use long strokes so I don't get clumps. Now, I have poked myself in the eye probably 10,000 times, and at least twice a week I will still poke myself in the eye. So this is something that I think requires the most trial and error of any of the makeup techniques that I use. And then I come in on the other side. I try and go right out to the corner and right into the center all the way to the bottom of my lash. and then I will do the bottoms. Trying not to hit my waterline, but sometimes that happens. Some days it's a little darker, some days it's a little lighter. That's part of the fun of makeup. Then before I finish off, the last thing that I do is I very gently rub underneath my eye with a q-tip, not only to catch any of the fallout from the eyeshadow that I was doing, but to try and catch any of the mascara that I may have accidentally touched under my eye. And then once I have that done, I finish off with lips. This is, so that's burgundy. This is one of the problems with my lipsticks. I have them all braille labeled, but the braille is only legible from one direction, and these are circular lipsticks. So it can be a little bit challenging to figure out what I was actually, so this is a magenta. I'm gonna go in with a magenta on my lip and then go over top of it with this really cool melted metal gloss. So this is a MAC lipstick in, I'm not sure what shade, it's a magenta-y color, and then go over top of it with this melted metal coppery peach color. One of the challenging parts about lipstick I find is actually tracing my lips properly. So sometimes I overdraw and most of the time I underdraw my lips just because I'm a little scared. So I start by trying to find kind of the cupid's bow in my lip and drawing the top first and going up, out to the side. And then I'll do the same thing on the other side. Find my cupid's bow so I can get that point. I've used this lipstick a lot, so it's very flat, which is more challenging. And then I just come into the center with this melted metal, just to kind of give it a little extra shine and pop. I've always wanted to be a little bit more experimental with my makeup, try some bright colors, but for me, I think mastering just the basics is kind of where I'm still at. So usually once I have my makeup done like this, I will give somebody a call on the phone, either my sister, I'll call somebody on Be My Eyes, I'll ask my boyfriend, whoever's around, just to make sure that I've blended everywhere. And then if there's anywhere I've missed or anywhere I've gotten makeup that I shouldn't, and then I'll be out for the day. So I'm gonna do that and then I'll be right back. Here is our finished makeup look. I think 
I did a decent job, but I can't actually tell in the mirror to know if I did a decent job, so you'll have to tell me in the comments down below. I found this a little bit more challenging than my typical makeup because I like to rest my elbow on a surface to try and stabilize my hand because they do shake a little bit, but I think I got my makeup on pretty straight. If you liked this video, if you want to see more content like this, more makeup tutorials, me trying more bold and unusual looks, having my boyfriend try and describe a makeup look, anything like that, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you'd like to see. Hit those bells and buttons down below. If you'd like to keep up with me between posts every Wednesday and Saturday, I have a Twitch stream every Tuesday and Sunday nights, and I have my Instagram channel linked on screen right now. So I'll see y'all next time. Bye for now.